The Bazura Project has had a wide variety of guests, but our dream list included Humphrey Bogart, John Gielgud, Alec Guinness, Sidney Greenstreet, Peter Lorre, and other stars sadly no longer with us. In a surprise move, they all make an appearance during our interview with Stephen Burkoff, an actor of stage and screen who has appeared in everything from the films of Stanley Kubrick to Beverly Hills Cop. And now, Bazura. There's a theory of acting that I subscribe to, and I'd like to get your opinion on it, that playing the straight man is so much harder than playing you know, the wacky man. And the, the example that I sort of always use is the, uh, the film Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. And Dustin Hoffman gets to play, you know, yes. wacky and all the rest of it. But the reason that works so well, in my opinion, is that Tom, Tom Cruise so successfully grounds the film yes. that, that's, that that's what makes Dustin Hoffman's performance work so well. Why does the wacky performances, I'd say wacky, why do those, the bigger performances, get the kudos and the straight man doesn't? Well, you see, that's a very interesting point that you've said, you know, for your limited audience. Um, and in a way, it's true. You see, the villain is, in a way, the scar on society. He is the venom. He is the disease. And when doctors look at disease and wounds, they're always more interesting. And they don't, you don't have to do anything. It just appears. They're like disgusting kind of superations of the flesh. It's a wound. A villain is a wound. He is a kind of malformation on the, on the face of society. So you just have to be a little weird and do a funny voice. And <coughs> it comes across. The straight guy has to carry the story, has to carry the film, has to carry the kind of the energy. So when you're th thinking of the old films, because I was brought up, you know, in films you may not remember, but with Humphrey Bogart, you ended up playing a lot of villains. But um, all, and all the characters that were very, very colourful car villains, he did a film called The Maltese Falcon. I don't know if you know oh, that. Yeah. Sydney Green Street, and yeah. he gets to play all yeah like that. And there you go. Got a, you he's got the through line. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. And you've got Peter Lorre, yeah. great German actor, so fascinating. But Bogey, the straight guy, that's tough because he's got to convince, be also frightening, yet be neutral, have no ticks and have, have you know weird things, and uh, and then that's right. He carries the film. We, sometimes a villain will dominate, sometimes, but only if he's the main central role. Mm. So, I mean, when Olivier does Richard III, that's a villain, but there's no good straight guy that carries any real weight. But when they do, you know, they, they really have to be good because you have to believe in them, they've got to have charisma, they've got to have power, and they don't have ticks and tricks to, rely to do on it. Because yeah. Peter Lorre, he had this funny German voice, you missed a slave, you know. We don't have the falcon, Sydney Green. Well, I'm sure, so we could discuss it. I'm sure, as civilized gentlemen, we don't have to have any form of conflict here. Yeah, sure, I know, so I don't have the falcon. Oh, please, Mr. Slade. So I, I love Peter Laurie, you know, the way I sometimes do films, I play all the characters. So that is one of my films where I, I like to play every, every character in the movie. Uh, let, let's hear your Mary Astor. Mary Astor? Wasn't she the female? In Maltese Falcon. In what? In Maltese Falcon. Sorry, you were oh. going through the cast. I just wanted. Yeah, to I'm Maltese sorry. I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't think of only. I only do just, you know, Peter Lorre, Sidney Greenstreet. You know, a bit of bogey. Yeah. But otherwise, fun. name any other films. I can run through every character in every single film that's ever been made in Hollywood. I think we've broken a number of copyrights. We might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Some are more fun than others, you know. Mm. Some I can't do that well. I'm just showing off at the moment. Sometimes I like to do Laurence Olivier talking to Sir John <laughs> with, Alec, with Alec Guinness maybe in the background saying, Oh, Larry, uh, you, you really have such a wonderful uh, delivery. And he said, Well, yes, I, I work on my voice. And, Oh, yes, you also have such passion. I wish I, I do. I wish, I wish I had your kind of daring, Larry. Well, because you never do anything else. You always play yourself. You would never use an accent, you never use dialect, you are always Sir John, and that's very commendable. Yes, I know, I've never been able to do this damned accent. So it is fun just to play around with them. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, I've heard, to know there's one guy who does it better than anyone in the world. He's better at that than he is at acting. But nobody knows about it, he does it secretly. 
That's Anthony Hopkins. Oh, yeah. he, recorded, I him, he was doing a program. And, and they said, well, we've got the rest of the day off because we finished, you know. He said, Tony, would you like to do something? And he said, well, I've got a little script. And he did a script about the National Theatre um, in the year 2050, when it's been turned into a car park. And he does all, and they're, all the ghosts of the actors are there, you know, all sleeping in this horrible, this is a John and Alec and this, and all of them. And it's the funniest. <laughs> and I thought it's the most brilliant thing, if you can get hold of it. He actually seemed to draw them out of his stomach. Mm. That they were perfect. He has been used for this, to Hopkins, when well, there was a scene, and I think it was might have been Sparta, because I'm not sure when, what film, when Olivier died or wasn't available. I think he died, and they wanted to add a scene, or they lost a, a reel, and Hopkins did his voice. Oh, wow. Look, he can do it, yeah, he's... I remember uh, there's a similar story with Peter Sellers. He did uh, a Humphrey Bogart, I think. Humphrey Bogart was shooting uh, Beat the Devil, the John Huston picture, um, or something like that, and, uh, and he and John Huston, I think, had a big blue during that film, and they sort of oh. they ended their friendship, and they needed to do some ADR afterwards. And yeah. they, got in, they got in Peter Sellers, who was, it was this pre-Goon show, everything, and they got Sellers in to, oh, do, very good. to do the bogey. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he did that. That's insane. Mm. How long ago was that Hopkins? He did that about 15 years ago. It's unbelievable. You don't believe that this is not Guinness, Gilgood, Peter O'Toole, no, no, Albert <laughs> Finney. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Fantastic. laughs> all. You know, does Albert, you know, <laughs> it's been turned into a car park. Oh. You know, see, Albert's going through the National Theatre. And he had this, because Finney has this marvellous, almost operatic, North Country, but fantastic voice. And Stephen Burkoff is currently appearing in whatever he damn well wants to. We'll be back after this. Mm -hmm.